Hi guys, just continuing on with uh, my mechanical theme from the other day. Thanks for your replies and responses. We're just um, running a uh, BTA 28 today, old school, all mechanical again. Uh, we'll go for a bit of a walkthrough with it, but um, apart from like their, their issues that they have with their small cam, it's a shame they never brought these out in a big cam because that would have been that would have been really good, but um, they never really progressed to that, so they've just made the small cam. This one's uh, for a drilling rig. It's in a uh, generator set application. They run about eight of these in line to run the uh, fully electric rig. They're quite a big unit. They, um, they have about 900 horsepower, these things, so they 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 got a bit of go. Um, I know that people put these things in trucks and push out well over a thousand, but uh, you know, that's sort of another matter again. Another, another animal, but this thing's sort of built for a bit of reliability, so it's in a high moisture environment. Yeah, yeah, that the truck work. Oh, did it? Ah, sweet. Ah, oh, that's good, mate. Yeah. All right, thanks, thanks, Jaden. Yeah, so we're just gonna go for a bit of a walk around this thing. I just uh, just wanted to talk a little bit more about it before we, uh, before we go out there. So, yeah, like I said, it's a shame they never went to a big cam because these things would have just been an awesome motor. They're just so good. And the, the, weak, the weak spot, of course, is that they uh, they had that small cam issue in them. So good in gen set applications, not so good with uh, going up and down in RPM. They don't like that change in, uh, change in revs too much. So this thing sits at 1500 all day. So I'll flip the camera around in a second and just go through a bit of a walkthrough about how we actually run these because this has got a, a generator spec uh, uh, governor on it's so like an electronic well, yeah I say it's a mechanical engine it's got the electronic actuator to control the throttle but other than that it's basically a mechanical engine uh, so yeah I run like a, um, uh, a Woodward governor sort of setup on it and I just I can screw the speed up and down so I sort of run it at variable RPM up to 1500 and then of course we do our full horsepower and everything at 1500 now full um, all our tests and pull down tests at 1500 so we don't go any higher than that so this thing's 900 horsepower at 1500 so it's pretty impressive so uh, yeah I'll flip the camera around and we'll uh, go for a bit of walk around yeah so here is uh, here she is sitting on the dyno these things are unbelievable when they run they're so quiet they're such a quiet engine I think they're one of the quietest out there before they get to sort of late model common rail which they're able to get rid of that combustion noise but these things are so thick in the block that the Combustion noises really are suppressed by that thick cast iron that's all around these engine, around uh, around each cylinder. This is my little Woodward control here, bit of a makeshift setup, but this little Woodward governor I can adjust with that speed there, just that little screw I use. And uh, this is my idle switch, idle and um, RPM switch, so I can always flick it back to idle at any time. So usual gauge panel. Don't tend to be. Uh, uh, too fussy with a lot of temps on this engine, so I tend to uh, stick to just the main ones. I don't tend to take any more than that, but uh, doing a video, Joel. What's happening? <laughs> this is Joel, head mechanic, head diesel fitter. It's the guy who actually, Joel's the guy who built that 453 that we did the other day, so anyway, it's about to go through a starter. Yeah, it's going to go walk around through the engine and that sort of thing, so uh, yeah, I'll stop the video and we'll get back, get back to you. Yeah, no, that was just Joel, just suggesting that uh, it would be a good idea to start doing more of these videos, showing some builds, showing how we, uh, showing some people some advice on how to do some little tricks in the trade, which there always is on every single engine, there's always something a little different. And These are sort of our forte, these old things, uh, VDAs, Detroit diesels, we love them, we, we've been around them a long time, like I had in that last discussion with the 453T, there's quite a bit of passion there, so... We'll go for a bit of a walk around this VDA. Just um, for those of you who don't sort of see a lot of these, there's not a lot of them around anymore, I suppose. But this one here is uh, 2000 and I believe it's 2008. It's a G5. So this is the last generation. So these are the ones that were made under license in India for Cummins. Because of course Cummins now don't really want to have much to do with the old things anymore. So they tend to stick with uh, their later model stuff and then their older stuff they'll... Um, They'll pass on to uh, to India and China and that to make a little bit unfortunate. We do see the quality. The quality does 
decline a little bit when they go to there. I, I, I don't believe that's the country's fault, as you know, it's it's more that they that Cummins under license sort of probably a little bit more lenient with uh, with their casting processes and that to keep the price down. So because they're still made under license by Cummins, so the buck stops with them. So we have seen some machining issues and quality with uh, with the Indian and Chinese made engines. They're not quite as good, but when we get back to uh, back to bare block, of course, we just press the reset button and anything that needs to be changed and fixed and modified, we do and and uh, get it back to a normal thing again. One little interesting point getting actually on with these machining on these engines. These are quite an interesting motor in the fact that we found that if you run anything more than 5,000 main bearing clearance, even if it's half a thou bigger, we start to compromise on oil pressure at full load. It's really interesting. So what we do is, well, what we found, I should say, is that we had an engine that we did uh, put through at 5,500 on the mains. And when we have a look at the video on this one, when we had oil pressure at 60 PSI, these things run pretty stable oil pressure at 1,500 no matter what. But what we found is that when we started applying load to the engine um, upwards of sort of 500 horsepower onwards, the oil pressure would drop down to 55 pound. Now, understandably, that's still within spec, but because they have eight of these engines in line, all the others sit at 60 all day, every day, regardless of load. And it did our head in for like weeks. We were trying to work out what is going on with this engine. It was dropping under load, which the only way I could think of was that the main bearings... The, the, the crankshaft was getting more load on it, getting pushed more to the bottom of the engine, opening up the oil gallery at the top and dropping the oil pressure, only under load. It wasn't RPM sensitive, it was load sensitive. And sure enough, we pulled the crank out, we tunneled the, at great expense, but once again, we just wanted to make it right and wanted to make it so that it was the same as all the other engines. Pulled the crank out, moved the, put the clearance back there four and a half thou, so we had to tunnel the block did it all to suit the crank, put it back in, and bang. That's the only thing we changed. It's the only thing we changed. And, and we put it back in, and away we went, and a full horsepower on the dyno 60 PSI sat there. Sat there all day. It was unbelievable to think that half a thou to one thou main bearing clearance, just as it gets over that point, we we drop. So that's a little thing there. There's little, little things that you sort of find as you go, little idiosyncrasies with every engine. You get those things, and, and this is why these videos that people post up, which I really appreciate on YouTube, people will always post up, and, and this is experience that costs millions of dollars for people, like it, it, the amount of hours wasted in trying to figure this stuff out. And I thank people for having having the, the, the uh, humility, I suppose, to... to to share this with people, to go, right, I've now figured this out. I don't want other people to go through this. So what I'm going to do is share this information so that no one has to go through the pain that I've had to go through. And that's that's really, really appreciate that. And I'm going to try in the future to talk about these little issues so that people don't go through it again. Because once again, we're talking a thousand and a half and it just made the world a difference. It cost so much money to fix and it was easy to fix at the start if 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 we hadn't had to, you know, if we'd got it on the first run, we wouldn't have had an issue. So anyway, so this is the VDA here. We're going to give it a run. Um, once again, thanks for comments and things like that. This thing is unbelievably quiet. I'll come out and do a video of it once we're running because they're super quiet engines. They're just really, and you can sit a 20 cent piece on the top, or if you're in America, you sit a nickel on the rocket cover and it won't fall over. I mean, these things are so smooth. So just a bit smoky on startup because they're mechanical, of course. They're not a... HVT injector, these things are old school, non-advanced timed injectors, so this thing blows white on start, and it blows white for a long time. I've actually had the fire alarms go off next door in the building next door because of these engines, so you really got to get them warm before you can give them some load, but once they get some heat into them, and once you get some load onto them, they clear right up and they're clear as a whistle. So there's old Mr. Squiggle ready to do some work. Alrighty, just about to go for a start up. We've got uh, fuel turned on, so this fuel switch here. I pull that out and we see down there there's a little yellow thing that's going to move. And that's turning my fuel on. So that's another little safety thing we've got in case we ever end up with a fire in here. 
Could we have gravity feed fuel tanks? We don't want to leave that on for too long while the engine, or the old VDA is sitting there because right now as soon as I turn that ignition key on, it's going to push fuel into the injectors, dribble onto the top of the piston and we end up with more smoke than what we need. So of course I need my cooling tower switched on here. That's to stop uh, the fire alarms going off next door because these engines once again, as like I said, are really smoky. Intake and exhaust fans in the dyno room. So that's going to Put in, like I said in earlier videos, 6,000 CFM in, 4,000 CFM out. I'm just going to turn my curling tower pump on. I'm not going to turn my uh, dyno pump on just yet. That's uh, just going to put the curling tower pump's going to put about 8 pound into the system and I'm just going to wait for the cork and Mr. Squiggle to come up and that means that it's full of water. Every engine we run, we actually run a lot of bleed lines. We're quite fanatical about that. We always run bleeds. We run bleeds out the intercooler if need be and that sort of thing. Anywhere there's potential for an airlock, we always cover that before we uh, start the engine. So we'll just wait for the uh, little cork to come up and then we're going to give it a start. So I uh, won't do any recordings on the video just yet. So Okay, so there she goes now. So I'm right to start it. Ah, there's a bit of puff of smoke coming out. So even though we keep quite uh, quite cool, um, quite a sealed exhaust system, it still comes out of the of the conduit. Uh, the bit of smoke on startup. So believe it or not, that engine, as you can see, is running. As so I was saying before about how quiet these engines are. So I've got good. I've got my oil pressure up there. So we're happy with that, happy with uh, everything else. So I should be able to go for a little walk out there and just have a look at this thing run because it's deadly quiet, unbelievable. How nice would that be to have in a truck? Other than the fuel consumption, ridiculous. I'm not even trying to yell right now, I'm just talking normally, that is how silent this motor is. There's so much cast iron around these combustion chambers, there's just no combustion noise. Got a little bit of noise from the turbos, a little bit of a rattle from my coupling. And that's it. So smooth. Nice, Very nice. All right. Well, the next video is going to be us just um, just starting to put a bit of load on it. I'll do the video on the screen. I might do uh, when we do the pull down test. We'll have the camera out. But other than that, um, yeah. Hope you enjoy the video, guys. Huh. If I wasn't looking at that flywheel, the only way I'd know in here that this engine was running is be to look at that. Very impressive. Old school. These things came out, I think, in the 60s or something like that. I mean, just, just, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a very much, it's sort of where our hearts out with these things. It's unbelievable. Anyway, guys, we'll uh, talk to you soon.